Hi friends, welcome to my another video. Today in this video, I will discuss the light load distribution in the common corridor and related service room and the power load distribution in the common area and the circuit formation for the light and power load. This video is the part 4 video in the series of G plus 4 building designing as per Diva regulation. In last three parts, I discuss about the flat load distribution and its circuit formation as well as I prepare the load schedule for 1BHK flat and 2BHK flat. In this video we will focus in the common area and the services room in the common area. We will do the light distribution and power distribution and we will make the circuit formation for light and power load. After that we will consider the DIVA regulation and we will make the load schedule for the common area load. But here I want to highlight one thing that here in the common area we have three types of light, uh, three types of load. First is lights, normal light. Second is general sockets. And third is HVAC load that is FCU. We have in that HVAC load we have a smoke purge system means during fire the fan, fan will run and it will extract the smoke generated due to fire. So we have a smoke purge system. Okay. So we will give the power supply to all of the load. Here we will make one separate dB for the light load and one separate dB for the power load. Okay. Why I am making two separate dBs? Because light dB have the interfacing with the lighting control panel. So if we will merge all the load together then it will be not recommended by the diva. If the load light load are not interfaced with the lighting control then we have provision in the diva that we can make 1 dB for all the loads but as in the building client required the lighting control system for the common area so we cannot merge light load with the power load as during interfacing with the light control panel it will be difficult and it is not recommended by diva so here there is one electrical room first floor electrical room here we will have two separate dB one will be for the power and one will be for the light now let us move to our actual topic that is the light distribution in the corridor. So we will place first the lights in the corridor. Here we will place one light. Okay. And we will place one light here. We will place one light here. And we will place one light here. It will be the center of the corridor. Okay. So we place four lights so far. We will place one light in between them. In between them. And in between them. So total we have eight lights. Okay. Now if you are wondering how, how I place 8 light, why I don't place 4 lights or 16 lights. So as per the IEC standard and as per DIVA regulation also, we have some wattage per meter area demand for different rooms. Like for kitchen we have different wattage per meter, meter square. For the common area we have different wattage per meter square for the shopping malls, for the uh, commercial uh, offices, for residential flats, we have different wattage per meter square. From this chart which is based on IECC standard we have different rooms and we need different lux for that room and we have the wattage per square feet for each room. For example we are focusing on corridor so corridor need 50 to 100 lux okay and the wattage requirement per square feet is 0 0.66 watt. So we are dealing in the meter square so we can change wattage per square feet to wattage per meter square. Okay. Depend on that for every rooms we have different lux level requirement and we have different wattage per square meter requirement. For example for parking internal we need 50 to 100 lux we need 0 0.19 wattage per square feet. For other example I will give you like conference room. Conference room we need more light so 300 to 500 lux and the wattage per square feet requirement is 1.2. 2, 3. For the classroom we need more light and that is 300 to 500 lux and the wattage requirement is 1.24 wattage per square feet. This is different topic I will make a separate video upon it but I want to just give you overview that we have different wattage per square meter for different rooms. Based on that I have allotted 8 lights so it will obey in this category. Hope you are understood this one but uh, surely I will make separate video upon this topic and I will refer DIVA regulation and ADDC regulation also and we will, I will try to explain 
how to evaluate the number of light in a particular area but by the way i already made one video that is the designing of lightings in a particular project watch that video i will provide the link in the description box in that video i discuss these point very thoroughly now let us back to our original topic now we place the light in one side of the corridor same thing we will follow this side corridor so let us place the lights here 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 and we will place in between these two light and it will be center of the corridor now we place light this side and we place light this side now we will place the light this side so we will place here we will place here we will place here okay we have we will place light here and here we will place in between them so what we have done we place eight light in this corridor we place eight light in this corridor and we place one two three four five six seven eight nine light nine lights in this corridor hope you are clear now now in the lift shaft also we need light but we will not feed this lift light from the first floor db so we will not mark here when i will do the light distribution for the ground floor then i will make the load distribution inside the lift okay when i will make the ground floor light distribution now we finish the corridor we have to finish now the service room in the electrical room we need two tube lights okay in the garbage chute we need one light okay in the store we need one light now in the water meter room we need one tube light which will be weather proof and we we required light in the telephone room which will be tube light okay now we finish the service room of the first floor also the staircase i will not cover in the first floor because the staircase light will be fed from the ground floor db okay now we have distributed the lights in the corridor as well as in the service room apart from that we have bulkhead hidden light okay so we will distribute the bulkhead hidden light also so this will be bulkhead hidden light this side and this side in same way we will have bulkhead hidden light this side and we have the bulkhead hidden light this side of the corridor in same way we will have the bulkhead hidden light this side and we will have the bulkhead hidden light this side hope you are clear now now we 100% completed the light load distribution inside the common area we will make the circuit formation for the light load in the flat video i distributed the power load and then i make the light light circuit formation but here as the db is separate so we don't have interlink with the power db with the light db so we can do directly the light circuit formation hope you are clear now now let us start the circuit formation for the light load here we will start the light load it will directly go to db and this light will be loop with this light this light will be loop by this light to 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 this light so we have completed one circuit we will give another circuit to this hidden light and it will go to db here i given the r phase for this side corridor light now we will give this side to another circuit that is y circuit and we will loop this light okay now we will make another loop between these two hidden light and we will give to db so we have two circuit in this corridor two circuit in this corridor this corridor have two red circuit this corridor have two yellow circuit so we will give this corridor to blue light in order to balance the load so here it will go to db and it will loop to this light then to this light then to this light then to this light then to this light to this to this to this now we will give another circuit for the hidden light so hidden light now we have completed the light circuit formation here we forget this two room so we will loop it from this sorry 
from here from here to here okay so we have completed the first floor common area corridor and the service room light circuit formation so here we will give the circuit marking also we will write here r1 we will write here r2 for this b1 we will write y1 we will write y1 and y2 for blue circuit we will write b1 and b2 so it will be very small db okay now we will make the load schedule for first floor common area light db after referring the material submittal we came to know that this light is of 50 watt tube light is of 100 watt the strip light is 15 watt per meter okay so the all tube light is of 100 watt okay all corridor lights are 50 watts and this water meter light is also 100 watt but weatherproof the store light is also 50 watt and the garbage chute light is also 50 watt this i took from the material submitter now we will tabulate it and we'll make the load schedule for the common area light db first floor so let us tabulate the load which we reflected in the layout in a load schedule so here you can see that i given r1 circuit for this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 lights this two light and this two light so i wrote r1 it is feeding through 16 ampere mcb the wire size is 2.5 square mm it is feeding to the corridor and the number of lights are 8 this 8 light 2 this 2 light 1 this light and again one for this store light okay now the corresponding loads also we will refer here you can see that this 18 uh, 50 watt light i mentioned for this 8 light here i mentioned 8 light and the sequently i wrote 50 watt so this 8 light is of 50 watt then i wrote 2 light this is the 2 light which is of 100 watt so i mentioned 100 watt then i mentioned 1 is for the garbage chute light and the rating of that light is 50 watt okay 50 watt and to the store area there is one light which is of 50 watt so i mentioned here 50 watt if we will calculate it we will find the value of 700 watt in same way we will do for y1 phase here you see the y1 phase is given to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 lights so i mentioned 9 lights and one light in the water meter room so i mentioned here one light for the water meter room here i can write slash water meter and here i can write slash electrical slash garbage chute slash store okay so here nine and one light so the corresponding loads i also mentioned this nine lights have 50 watt light so 50 watt and this one light which is in the water meter room is of 100 watt so i mentioned here 100 watt same way for b1 phase here b1 phase we have i have given to this eight light and plus this two light in the telephone room so i'll show you here b1 load is given is fed from 16 ampere mcb wire size is 2.5 square mm it is in corridor slash telephone room okay and the total lights are this eight lights plus this two lights so i mentioned here eight plus two the corresponding loads i also mentioned here 50 watt for this 8 light and 100 watt for this 2 light now let us move to the r2 phase r2 phase is given to this hidden light okay and as i told you this hidden light is 15 watt per meter so and the total length of the hidden light is 15 meter this side 15 meter this side this you have you will calculate from the autocad from the architectural drawing okay so total 30 meter so i wrote here 30 meter for the corridor and the corresponding load i mentioned here 15 watt per meter in same way i did it for the r2 phase and b2 phase okay now i have written the number of lights and its corresponding load so it is easy to calculate the load per phase so after calculating we got the 700 watt load due to r1 circuit 550 watt load due to y1 circuit and b1 circuit have the load of 600 watt in same way for the hidden light 450 watt for r phase for y phase and for b phase here i given one 
one load 150 watt this is for the ELCP uh, sorry LCP LCP panel lighting control panel so it is 150 watt so I mentioned here 150 watt now the total load on R phase is sum of this that is 1150 watt for Y phase 1150 watt and on B phase it is 1050 watt so total load is total connected load on this DB is 3.35 kilowatt okay the current on this DB is by calculating from this formula we got the current rating is 5.41 ampere with the safety factor it came as 6.7 ampere okay but we have given the ELCB rating 32 ampere so we can write a isolator rating any rating higher than the calculated rating so here I can write 20 ampere 25 ampere 32 ampere but as the subsequent sub load is 32 ampere breaker so it is not logical to write the main breaker less than the ELCB rating so I wrote 32 ampere isolator the wire size by referring the diva regulation that is 3.5 watt is this coming 4 square mm CU XLP cable with 4 square mm ECC cable I already discussed you how for the light circuit the MCB rating as per diva regulation is 16 ampere the wire size for the light circuit should be 2.5 square mm and we need to check that the load per circuit should not exceed 2000 watt so in any of the circuit the load is not exceeding more than 2000 watt okay so we are obeying the diva regulation I told you also how to write the ELCB rating double of the minimum MCB rating so here the all breakers are 16 ampere so double of that 632 ampere and the ELCB sensitivity rating will be 100 milliampere as all loads are light load okay and the isolator rating I already discussed so this is all about this video I hope you clearly understood how to distribute the light load for the common area how to make the circuit formation in the common area light load and the tabulation of load in a diva approved load schedule format so in this video we cover the common area light distribution and the load schedule formation which is the part 4 video in part 5 video I will discuss the common area power distribution power load distribution which will be general purpose socket and the HVAC load and I will prepare the load schedule for this common area I hope you find my video informative and you are following all the parts related to G plus 4 building designing if you really like my video then please hit the thumbs up button press the bell icon for future updates and kindly subscribe my video it is my humble request to all of you guys to subscribe my video and please react in the comment section so I will know what the things where I'm lagging and where I have to improve my video. So we will meet in any other video. Till then take care, keep learning and bye-bye. Thank you so much.